Deuteronomy and the 15th chapter. I'm going to talk to Sister Lawson and I'd like to go see the preacher right after the service and so we think about that and how we can do that and uh, them glorified bodies are going to fix everything aren't they amen and we're all we're all going to be home here in just a little while I believe that I believe that amen Deuteronomy in the 15th chapter will be our text. I'm going to give you two prayer requests for our ministry before I read the text. I, I need uh, a 5 by 8 enclosed trailer to help us with our travels, with everything we've got going on. If you, you pray about that, if you know anything about anybody that's got one, you keep your eyes open. I figured there's plenty of rednecks and hillbillies in this church. Y'all might can find me a five by eight in close trip. Please don't steal one and bring it to me. <clears throat> Unless you can do it with all oh, paperwork clear. But that, <laughs> some of these boys look like they might have me one before the Sunday. I know where one is, preacher. <laughs> Y'all don't, y'all don't be misbehaving while the pastor's away. Then I am going to Albania again and uh, in December, and I have, I don't, I'll talk more about it tonight, but we do have uh, financial need there, and I've got to purchase tickets in two weeks. And so if you, I mentioned that today, let the Lord speak to somebody's heart to help us. And so those two things, uh, Deuteronomy 15 and verse 15, Deuteronomy chapter 15 and verse 15, he said, and thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in the land of Egypt and the Lord thy God redeemed thee. Now I let you be seated. <clears throat> I can't remember if I prayed already. Ha! So I've been hanging out with senior citizens. So I'm going to pray again. Father, would you touch and bless and help us this morning in the worship service? Lord, we do ask you to go yonder and just across the way and touch Brother Lawson today. And God, strengthen him and encourage him and and. Heal him and help him, Lord, and bring him back <clears throat> shortly. Let thy will be done, and, and thy will will be wonderful. We pray for Sister Lawson and for all the family, God, that you'd give them grace during these trying hours. Now, our Father, <clears throat> the man of God, has stood by <clears throat> all of us in our hard times, and so let us stand by him. And God, go the second mile to be a blessing to the family. Now, our Father, bless the text, and we thank you that we have a wonderful Savior today. Let our hearts burn within us while we walk by the way, and we'll thank you for it in Christ's name and all the Lord's people said. Amen. 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 My <clears throat> burden this morning is very simple. It's a message the Lord's given me last Saturday, and I've already preached on this business two or three times in the last few days. And I, I want to give you this, and it's simply what the Lord's put on my heart, and I've, like I said, I've preached last Sunday in a couple of places where we've been. And I want to preach on the last words of wisdom. <clears throat> These are Moses' last words out of the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is a special book because of that. Uh, it's his last words. And he didn't die of old age. He, he died with his full strength. God took him and had some other plans for him. And of course, God wouldn't let him cross over and see some things. But he's going to, and Moses did get to cross over. He stood on the Mount of Transfiguration. Can I get a witness right there? And, uh, but the Lord gave me these thoughts and gave me this message. Now, 
I've, I've got four sermons in a series, and I'm going to give you all four this morning. <laughs> Some of you look like you're depleted of happy bubbles, and I'm going <clears> to <throat> reboot and recharge and regroup and uh, help you with some happy bubbles. But they are the last words of wisdom. I want to take two men out of the Old Testament and let them give us their last words, and <clears throat> two men out of the New Testament and let them give us their last words and, uh, and see what they could say unto us. The last words of these men before they, and with this being Youth Sunday, and I didn't know that this was Youth Sunday, but that's, that's appropriate. Especially, I guess the Holy Ghost knows what he's a doing. Somebody say amen. amen. And uh, I love our moderator. <clears throat> amen. Oh, well. <laughs> Dean McNeese is coming. Now. <laughs> I, I, I want you to sign my Bible after church. <laughs> Amen. That's one, that's one of the best introductions I've had. I, I like that. Amen. <laughs> you're singing and then you're singing. Amen. Brother Lawson have been proud. That's about how he does it too, ain't he? Just, Amen. <clears throat> First time I ever come in here, brother, I thought he was mad at me. Brother Lawson scared me to death. <laughs> Amen. Look like an eagle up here, stern. <laughs> I was sure I was in trouble for something just because he didn't, you know. I was scared. <laughs> the last words. Here's what Moses, I'm going to use Moses and Solomon and then, then the apostle Paul and then our beloved brother John and, and if I can get around to all four of them. And Moses said this, uh, he said, don't forget. Don't forget. Over and over in the book of Deuteronomy, he said, don't forget. Don't forget where the Lord brought you from. Do y'all want to look at it? Let's just look at a few verses that might help us. Deuteronomy fifteen fifteen, And thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in the land of Egypt. And the Lord thy God redeemed thee. Look in chapter 16, verse 12. And thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in Egypt. Now we just sang Amazing Grace. John Newton had, had this verse in a plaque over his study. I read the autobiography of John Newton and he died as an old man. He was an old preacher. And you'd go up the stairs into his attic and that was his that was his study. And as he went in, and of course, John Newton, I don't know if you know his story, the man who wrote Amazing Grace. He was a slave trader. Yeah. And as such, he had, he had sold men and, and ran back and forth there across the ocean and been a part of murder and been a part of rape and been a part of kidnapping and, and awful, awful, wretched sins. And John Newton even was captured at one time. And in one of them islands, I'm wanting to say South Pacific, you can go check up on that. He was, he was captured in one of those islands. And they put him out back, he ended up out back in a cage. And when they fed the dogs, they fed him and brought his food to him there and shoved it in that cage. And I remember reading that, that he said, when he got that low, it's when his heart turned to God and he cried out in his heart. If I remember right, he said, if I can get back to London and get back to Mama, I'm going to get saved. Amen. That'd make a good song right there. And he did. He got back and he got saved. And, and the man who had committed awful sins and then ended up in the cage treated like an animal. He sat down and wrote that song Amen. that saved a wretch like me. And actually, in those days, the preachers, he was a preacher and he preached for years. And on a Sunday morning, he was preparing to preach out of Romans 5.20. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Amen. Amen. I, I, I may say that again just to make the devil nervous. I'm glad that where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. And the tradition in those days for those preachers was 
that when a man preached a message like he was to write a song, they wrote a song every Sunday. They wrote a song to go with their sermon. And that was what he wrote that morning when he was looking at that abounding grace. He wrote, Amazing Grace. And they said if you went up into his study, you went up steep, narrow steps, up into the attic where he had made his Bible study, and, and the plaque was over the door, and it was this verse, Thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in the land of Egypt. Well, that'll help somebody worship right there. I remember also reading in the story that the last time he stood in the pulpit to preach, that he forgot where he was. He'd begin losing his mind. He was disoriented and he stood there and he didn't know where he was. And so the minister of the church stepped up and spoke to him for just a moment and reminded him where he was, what he was doing. And so he turned and looked at the people and the last time he ever preached, he said this. He said, I can't remember much anymore these days. He said, but one thing I remember <laughs> every morning when I awake, he said, I remember that I am a great sinner, but Christ is a greater Savior. Amen. Amen. Thou shalt remember. And that's what Moses said, don't forget don't forget, would you like to underline some scriptures? Look in chapter four and uh, verse number nine. Chapter four and verse number nine. He said, only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons, and thy son's sons. He said, let's, let's don't forget. And somebody needs to teach our sons what God has done for us. Can I get a witness right there? Amen. Amen. And then chapter 4 and verse 23. Take heed unto yourselves, lest ye you forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you. And make you a graven image or the likeness of anything which the Lord thy God hath forbidden thee. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. And he said, let's don't forget. Somebody needs to teach our sons and our sons' sons who God is and what God has done. And then he said, let's don't forget the covenant that our God made with us, that our God made for us, that we made with our God. Let's don't forget. And look in chapter uh, uh, 5 and verse 15. And here he's going through the, he's rehearsing and, and reminiscing of when he received those Ten Commandments. And look in chapter 5, verse 15. He's got down to the Sabbath day and talking about the day of worship. And verse 15, he says, And remember that thou wast a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord thy God brought thee out thence through a mighty hand and by a stretched out arm. Therefore, the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep the Sabbath day. Amen. I still think you ought to go to church on the Lord's day and remember what God done for you. Now them Jews, they gathered on the last day of the week and the tradition that the apostles gave us in the book of Acts, we gather on the first day of the week. That's because those under the law were ending the week, but those under grace started the week. <laughs> Amen. The law brings everything to an end, but grace will give you a new beginning. I wish I had somebody right there. Amen. Didn't grace give you a new beginning? Amen. And, and I want to go to church and remember what he'd done for me. Now in chapter 6 and verse 12, I'm just showing you these scriptures this morning. Chapter 6 and verse 12 said, then beware lest thou forget the Lord which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. What about that? Amen. And then again in chapter eight and verse 11, he said, beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee this day lest when thou hast eaten and art full 
and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein. And when thy herd